So in this example, we have uh, uh, multiple uh, bins of material. We have an end item A and F, and C is actually the component of both A and F, and this is its uh, product tree. We have a gross requirement of 60 for A in week three and 70 in week five. So there are no schedule receipts here as well. So net requirements will be equal to gross requirements. The lead time is one week, the lot sizing policy is lot for lot. So we will, uh, we will need a plan order receipt equal to net requirements and plan order release will be one week prior to prior to that so this will be 60. so that is simple for part a uh, next we have f in this case so f is an independent item so we don't have schedule receipts for F as well. So net requirements will be equal to, will be equal to 100. So schedule receipts will be 100. Lead time is one week. We have lot for lot. So we will have a planned order release in, in week three. So that is the case of F. So that was simple as well. Uh, next we have B, so B is the component of A. So for B, the requirements will come from, from A, so this 60, as well as this 70. So there are 200 available, so after, in fact, we will carry these 200 in week two after meeting requirements of this 60, we will have 140 on hand. We will carry these 140 in week three and after meeting requirements of this 70 in week four, we will left with 70 and we will carry those 70 in, in period five as well. Next we have part C. So now C is the component of both A as well as F. So for, for each A, we need two C's. So this 60 will become 120. And this 70 in week four will become 140. And from F, we will have at this 100. So I hope this is clear. So this is uh, the concept of exploding the requirements. So this 60 into 2 is this 120 and this 70 into 2 is this 140 and this 100 is as it is. So uh, for, for C, we will continue. So we have a schedule receipts of 120 in week two. We are not having any safety stock. So we will, we will end up with zero projected available at the end of uh, period two. So we need 100 in period three. So net requirements will be, will be 100. So lead time is two weeks, lot size policy is lot for lot. So plan order receipt will be 100. So the order will be released in, in week one. So ending inventory will be zero, net requirements of 140 in week four, plan order receipt of 140. So corresponding plan order release of 140 in week uh, two because lead time is, is two weeks. And then we have uh, the component D. So 
uh, now D, the case of D, you can see here that uh, D is the component of F as well as C. So first we will see, uh, for example, C because that is uh, something we just solved. So we will have this 100 and 140. as the gross requirements for D and uh, that come from C and from F we will have uh, now each F requires two Ds so this 100 actually will turn out into 200. So I repeat that this D was the component of both C and F so each C requires one D so the planned order release of actually C becomes the gross requirements for D, but each F requires two Ds, so planned order release for F was 100 in week three, so 100 into this two is 200 in week three. So we have uh, the planned order uh, receipt of 300, so after meeting requirements of 100, we will have projected available of 200 at the end of period one, after meeting this requirement of 140, we will have a projected available of 60 at the end of period two. So now we need, uh, we have net requirements of actually 140. So 200 minus 60 will be 140. So we need a planned order receipt of 300 because the lot size is 300. Lead time is two weeks, so we will need to place an order at the beginning of week one. So that is 300. So after meeting uh, this requirement of uh, 140, we will have 160 on hand and we will carry those 160 in period four and five as well. E is the component of C, so we will have the gross requirements from C, so this 100 and 140 uh, will be the gross requirement for uh, for E. We have 400 already available, so after meeting this requirement of 100, we will have 300 left. After meeting the requirements of this 140, we will have 160 left, and we will carry those 160 in period three, four, and five as well. So this is how actually we can uh, use multiple, that is more than one bills of materials together, especially when they have some components in common, like they had uh, A and F had C in common and F uh, and C had D in common as well. We could, we could draw this C here as well. So that would be logically the same here as well as here. So we had actually two end items, A and F, and we used them together to, to plan for the material. Thank you.